Hello everyone, my name is Scott and I'm a member of the Popbox team. We've put together a quick video to cover browsing through the media library. In our previous video, we added content from a USB drive and from a network share. Right now, we're browsing the media library after the box has had time to scan and categorize the content. It's important to note that the larger your library is, the longer the aggregation takes. If you've got the largest digital library on the block, most likely you'll have to wait a while before everything gets scanned in. Let's start with the main attraction, video. Your videos are broken into three categories, home videos, movies, and TV shows. You also have the ability to view anything you've recently watched or anything you've tagged as your favorite. Going over to movies, we can see that IMDb has given us metadata and cover art for our media files. Why don't we go ahead and pull up the info panel? Just highlight a movie and press the info button on your remote. Here you will see the name of the movie, its release date, runtime, cast, and a synopsis. From this screen, you can also add the file to your favorites, start playing the video, or change the information if you have the wrong title. Let's add this video to our favorites. Just select Add Favorites and you should see the text on this button change to Remove from Favorites. This will let you know it's been added. What if the pop box downloaded the wrong info from IMDb? Well, I know I have the Transformers 2 trailer in my media directory, however, it's showing up as the first title. To fix this, just select the Find Information button. Here you will just need to type in the name of the movie and hit Enter. Once you do this, the pop box will queue IMDb servers and pull possible matches. I'm going to go ahead and select Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. Now you should be redirected back to the movies page and the movie is now showing up correctly. One thing that I'm noticing on my movies page is that there's an item called home. After hitting OK to play the file, I found out it was actually a video of a cool magic trick I recorded when I was perusing the CES halls this year. Sometimes the scanner gets confused and puts home videos into movies. No problem, I'll just move that video. To do so, we'll go ahead and go down to the All Videos page. Then we'll locate the entry called Home and hit the Info button on the remote. If I select Change Video Title, then the keyboard screen comes up. I'll type in CES Magic Trick. Once I'm done, it will ask me if I want to move this to home videos and rename it to what I entered in. Now I'll go up to home videos. As you can see, the video is now showing up here with the name I typed in earlier. Let's take a quick look at TV shows. This screen looks a little different. Here we have the shows listed out on the left, broken down by season, and then on the right we have a list of episodes for that particular season. It's pretty straightforward as far as browsing is concerned. At this time, we don't support individual episode titles or plot descriptions. However, we are working with IMDb and other potential sources to flesh out the TV section, offering more info for the user. Now, if we hit the green button on the top of the remote, we'll go ahead and move over to the music section. Unlike the video section, which uses IMDb, this section relies on the information embedded into the song file. The aggregator will go ahead and read that information and then sort the music accordingly. You have your standard categories on the left, artists, albums, playlists, and favorites. It's important to note that the pop box only supports M3U playlist files at this time. Why don't we go ahead and pick a song to play? When the music starts playing, an indication on the bottom left comes up telling me that the music player is accessible by pressing the green button. Whether or not the music player is up, you can hit the skip forward or backwards button to navigate between tracks in a playlist or album. 
you can also hit play, pause, or stop to control the playback. I'll go ahead and stop the song now. If you want to play the entire album or entire artist offering, you will need to hit the play button on the remote. If you select a single song and hit the OK button, it will only play that one song file. And last but not least, we have photos. To get there, we push the yellow button on the top of the remote. There's not a whole lot of information that the box can pull from photos. They don't have ID3 tags, and there's no metadata on the web. So how does it categorize photos into albums? Well, it does it the same way you would on your computer. Folders. If you have a folder called Art, then that's your album. If you have one called John's Graduation, then all the photos in that folder will show up as an album. And of course we can add any of our photos to our favorites category. We'll cover the app section in more detail in another video, but I did want to show it off briefly. To get there, just press the blue button on the top of the remote. Here you can view all the apps installed on your box or view them by category. So, you've got your digital media library nice and full. Hundreds of movies, photos, and music files. If you have a lot of content and you're not in the mood to browse through it all to get to something specific, you can use the search feature. There are two ways to do this. The first is to press the home button and then go to search. The second is just to press the search button on the remote. It's important to note that it will only search whichever category you're in. If you want to search through TV shows, then go to the TV shows category and then search. Or if you want to search for a specific song, then you'll need to go into the music section and then into the all songs category. A more robust search option is currently being worked on and will replace the search item in the home bar once it's complete. That wraps up our look at the media library. I hope you found this helpful and thanks for your time.